Uh, welcome PCS members and friends uh, to our uh, today's Tuesday PCS IBS seminar. Uh, it is a great pleasure to have uh, with us today uh, Professor Hideo Aoki, and I would like to invite our scientific host Alexei to introduce our speaker. Please, Alexei. Okay, yeah, thank you, Tilen. So our today's speaker is Professor Hideo Aoki from University of Tokyo and uh, we will be talking about flat bands as an arena for designing superconducting and topological systems. So uh, Professor Aoki received his PhD from University of Tokyo in 1978 and then was a research associate at the University of Tokyo and visited also University of Cambridge. And since uh, 1986, uh, he um, is a professor at the University of Tokyo, first an associate and later full professor and since 2016, he is an emeritus professor at the University of Tokyo and uh, jointly also at the Advanced Industrial Science and Technology um, Institute in Tsukuba in Japan. Uh, so his main research interests focus about many body and topological uh, materials, including um, superconductivity, magnetism, superfluidity. And as you can see today, he will be covering the topic of superconductivity in flat bands, uh, which is of interest to many of us. And with this, um, let's welcome our speaker. Thank you very much. Um, first, I'd like to thank the organizers, uh, especially Alex said, for giving me a chance to give a talk in this PCS IBS seminar. Okay, let's move on to the uh, full screen mode. Can you look at the full screen slide? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me talk about flat bands as an arena for designing superconducting and topological systems. Okay. Um, this is a plan of my talk. So um, for the flat band systems, I'll be talking about superconductivity from repulsive interactions. So I'm here talking about the uh, uh, anisotropic and conventional su superconductivity and also topological properties. In equilibrium, um, here I'll be covering flat band superconductivity and also non fermi liquid properties. Then I'll move on to the non equilibrium properties. Uh, and I talk about floquet topological insulator for flat bands. Then I'm going to talk about non equilibrium induced superconductivity. Um, so I'll be talking about uh, ordinary D wave superconductivity uh, changing into floquet topological D plus ID superconductivity. Okay, so. Today's talk is basically an extended version of my talk at the flat band workshop in August this year. But I'm including a new work uh, with uh, Sota Kitamura on Floquet topological B plus ID superconductivity induced by chiral many body interaction. It just appeared in archive. Okay. Can you look at my mouse pointer? Uh, yes, we can see it. Okay. Okay, so let's start with this uh, uh, flat band superconductivity. Uh, by the way, uh, I'll be working uh, any questions during my talk. So do we interrupt me? Um, so this is uh, the classification of pairing from repulsive interaction in momentum space and real space. Uh, in my uh, picture. So this is a single orbital one band system, uh, K space. This is a single band dispersion. This is a multi orbital multi band system. And this is a flat band system, uh, single orbital one band flat band, and single orbital multi band flat band. In K space, and in real space. Okay, let's start with the ordinary single orbital one band dispersive uh, system. So these yellow arrows stands for the uh, main nesting vectors. So the typical 
pair scattering channel is like this. So pairs will be scattered uh, across the uh, hot spots, which is the antinodal regions. Okay. For the multi-orbital multiband systems, Again, this yellow arrow stands for the nesting vectors. Then the pair scattering also occurs uh, along these uh, nesting vectors. Okay, so uh, these systems have hot spots, antinodal region, or electron and hole pockets, and the pair scattering occurs between the hot spots, and this produces. Uh, D wave superconductivity in the high TC cube rates. And this produces S plus minus wave in ion based superconductors. Okay. Uh, if we go to the flat band system, then for the single band case, I'm talking about a dispersion where we have a flat part in the dispersion. So in this case, the nesting vector is sort of a bunch of nesting vectors, not isolated nesting vectors. So the uh, uh, pair scattering uh, occurs all over these bunch of nesting vectors. Okay, and this result, oh, sorry, this result in a, a very spatially extended Cooper pairing. And oh. And this is the uh, multiband flat band system, which consists of dispersive band and flat band. Okay. Um, so um, for the flat band system, we have either a two band system consisting of flat band and dispersive band, or one band system where a part of the dispersion is flat. And uh, their scattering occurs between the flat band and dispersing band like this. Or in the case of a uh, one band case, between the flat part of the dispersion and the dispersed, dispersing part of the dispersion. Okay. Uh, if we first look at the two band system, then for the attractive interaction, this is a kind of a sur condo mechanism for dispersive bands. Uh, because they show that if you introduce the interband interaction, then that will enhance your TC. But this is uh, for the attractive Hubbard model. But here we are talking about the repulsion, namely spin fluctuation mediated pairing. Okay, so an interest is uh, flat bands can have uh, entangled quantum mechanical states. So would that result in highly entangled interactions? Okay. Also, uh, we have to be careful about the position of the Fermi level. Um, and we, we are going to show that uh, we have a higher TC when flat band is incipient. Namely, uh, the flat band is close to, uh, but somewhat away from the Fermi energy. Okay, so um, let's look at the flat band superconductivity here in repulsive Hubbard model on diamond chain. Uh, this is a diamond chain, and this is the simplest possible one dimensional flat band. Okay, um, this is a three band system because we've got three sides in an unit cell. So we've got the dispersive band, two of them, and the flat band. And this is uh, very closely related to uh, the narrow wide band system considered by Kazuhiko Kuroki back uh, early, no, back in 2005. Uh, this is a kind of a cross-linked two-leg ladder with uh, uh, narrow and wide bands. But anyway, the physics is uh, the following. Okay, this is a flat band, this is dispersive band, and let's assume that Fermi energy is here on the dispersive band. So the Cooper pair uh, reside on this uh, turning point. But due to the many-body interaction, 
uh, there is a quantum mechanical uh, pair scattering processes between the uh, dispersive band and the flat band. And we can show that this very much enhances TCA. Okay. And um, one feature of the flat band is um, we can't have a one year states. Well, these are the smallest possible uh, one year states, but they are overlapping. They are not orthogonal. So we can't call, uh, call them one year states. So this is a speciality of the flat band. Okay. And this is a phase diagram obtained by DNRG. Uh, this is the band filling axis. Uh, this is a one third filling, namely uh, out of three bands, the lower one is uh, just completely full. And this is a, uh, the system doped from one third filling. So the frame energy is uh, just below the flat band. And we've got a superconductivity uh, in this region. And for the one third filling, namely dispersive band is 100% uh, full. Uh, flat band is uh, completely empty. And we can show that the ground state is a uh, uh, topological insulator. So this superconductivity here uh, sits just adjacent to a topological phase. Okay. Um, how do I know the one third field state is topological? Uh, we can examine that in terms of entanglement spectra, uh, the degeneracies. Can you, can you explain what T prime and T are? Ah, sorry. Um, T is a nearest neighbor hopping and uh, T prime is second neighbor hopping. Um, by changing T prime, we can uh, distort the uh, flat band into a uh, dispersing band and so on. So T prime is just a control parameter, but the mainly I'm talking about the T prime equals zero. Thank you. Uh, I have a follow-up. So if T prime is zero, uh, can you go back two slides, please? Yes, uh, what, uh, so I, I'm not sure whether I understand. Do you have a magnetic field which you add here to this uh, problem? Or not? Uh, magnetic field, uh, this is zero magnetic field. Right, so then as far as I remember, and, and uh, you have only these hoppings, right? There's no, in this in this uh, diamond chain, there are no on-site energies involved? No, there is, that. it's the Hubble model, no? So they have interactions. Yeah, I understand that there are interactions, but uh, uh, when I see this picture with these, uh, uh, well, compact states there, these uh, red crosses, right? These are these non bunny functions, as you called them, which are not uh, orthogonal to each other. That's right. Yeah, uh, but I don't understand this because uh, the simplest one, year, the simplest the compact state will just be on, on two sides, on a top and bottom side in no, one no. unit. Yeah. Yeah, so talking, uh, I probably don't understand what kind of model you really have here. Right, right. Here I'm talking about, um, first you can construct uh, block states in case space. Okay. So, we so, we, so, we have, wait, so, so let's go step by step. So first we, we do not add yet interactions, right? We just take the tight binding yes. problem. Here, okay. For, for this red crosses, I'm talking about the one band uh, basis functions. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, but when T prime is zero, then uh, it, uh, it is true, Sergei is right, that the compact states are on a single diamond, just uh, the, the vertical bond of uh, inside each diamond. No, 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 that is not true. Um, if the only me... interaction is T, on the edges of the triangle and T is the same or of a diamond. And if T is the same on all these bonds, then the simple uh, compact states are the states in which on the upper uh, row, you have wave function one and on the lower one, you have minus one. And that's all you need to get a, a, 
an eigenstate at energy zero. Oh, let me repeat. Uh, for a periodic system, we can always construct Bloch states in K space, whose uh, spectrum is this, okay? Then we can Fourier transform the wave function in, in K space to real space. Then um, we can usually, we can get the one year states, which are usually uh, also to each other. But in, when some condition is fulfilled, which is called the connectivity condition, then the flat bands has a very special property that we cannot make these states orthogonal to each other. So that's the whole point I'm talking about. Are you imposing non-zero wave function in the center, in the intersection between two neighboring diamonds? You can construct that state, but here I'm talking about the Ovanier basis function, which is a Fourier transform of the Bloch function from K space into real space. So you are okay. saying the Vanier states are not the same as the, as the compact localized states? No, it's a, it's a Fourier transform of the Bloch state from K space to real okay. space. But I can for sure take a compact state, which is uh, sitting just on two sides, on a top and bottom side, and then fully transform that uh, and get a block state. And yes. I should get the same block, and I should get the same block state because the block states are, I guess, unique in this case. Um, here I'm That's plotting also. the block states for this flat band. Okay. Yeah. 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 And in that case, the uh, um, um, I've got this. Uh, so I, I take I take a compact state which lives just on one unit cell on two sides, and then I just uh, shift it and and fully transform it, and then I should get a block state, still an eigenstate. And uh, now I'm I'm a bit puzzled, but maybe we can discuss. No, later. no, 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 no. It's, it's a, the, the, the the definition of one state has to start from the block state. Because... Sure, but I just constructed a block state out of these. Uh, Compact states which live on two sides and not on five. Because it, it, it's a it's a uh, irreducible representation of the translational symmetry group or space group. So maybe we, we can to... discuss later. Maybe then. Okay. Course. Right. Okay. Thank um, you. Then what? Okay. Um, let me go back to this slide. How do I know the one third field state is topological? I can tell from the entanglement spectra and edge states. These are the uh, uh, topological edge states for finite uh, diamond chain. And we notice that the, these entanglement spectra and edge states very much differ how I cut the infinite system into finite systems with edges. Um, whether I cut the chain like this or like that. And this immediately reminds us of the, the famous a Holden's S equal one and Fermat chain. Um, in this case, uh, each S equal one uh, spin wave function can be decomposed into two S equal one half states. And Duncan showed that the spectrum very much differs when you cut the chain like this or like that. And uh, later, uh, the physics was shown by uh, Affleck and the company. Okay, so these two has a, a semi universality class in terms of the topological system. Okay, um, I mentioned that uh, there is a, some condition called connectivity condition for, for the strange vanish states. And these are the typical flat ones uh, models uh, by Elliot Leap, uh, by Andreas Mielke, and by Haru Tasaki. Okay, uh, all these are the uh, uh, multiband system because uh, a unit cell contains uh, more than one atomic sites. Okay, and if we look, if we look at the uh, one year, one year states, which are not orthogonal to each other, then this is a one year state, non-orthogonal one year states for the leap model. 
This is a non-orthogonal stage for Miyuki model. And this is a non-orthogonal stage for the Tosaki model. They are all overlapping in each other. Okay. Um, there are a lot of papers discussing one year spread for flat bands. Um, for topologically trivial flat bands, uh, Vanderbilt and the company uh, discuss this in terms of in terms of maximally localized learning functions. For topological flat bands, um, Haruki Watanabe and the company uh, discussed this in terms of what they call fragile topology. So this is of course uh, more complicated. Um, in more general terms, uh, topological systems have no spatially localized money states. Uh, in other words, there is no adiabatic route to the atomic limit if your system is a topological system, uh, as again shown by uh, Haruki Watanabe and the company. Um, historically, uh, we know that for the quantum hole effect, uh, since uh, it has long been known that quantum hole systems have no one year or mutually orthogonal, no orthogonal one year states. Okay. Um, also, uh, these references talk about quantum geometry of flat band wave functions uh, to discuss Landau levels. Okay. Okay. Um, one interesting question is if we have a topological flat band, then can that favor superconductivity? And Kaidi Teruma in Finland and the company have shown that yes, uh, superfluidity is enhanced in topologically non trivial flat bands. Uh, they, they have shown that if you look at the superfluid weight, this is lower bounded by the topological Chan number. Um, they first shown this uh, in the mean field theory. Um, but they uh, talked about this for the attractive Hubbard model. Okay. Um, then they went beyond the mean field for the attractive Hubbard model again uh, with DMLG and exact dimerization. And they confirmed that this lower bound, namely the superfluid weight, lower bounded by the topological number times the uh, attractive Hubbard U. Uh, okay. This is done for the Kreutz lattice and also done for the attractive leap lattice. Okay. But my interest here is what happens uh, for the repulsive Howard interaction? Okay. So I think this is an open question how we can talk about the uh, superfluid weight for the repulsive unconventional pairings. Okay. Um, Okay, I mentioned that repulsion induced superconductivity in, in the incipient flat bands with a fermi energy just below the flat band. Uh, okay. Um, then uh, there was the uh, uh, discovery of the ion based superconductivity, and especially for the ion selenide superconductor, uh, where uh, this uh, whole band is below the ferro energy. So this one has no ferro in pockets, but still we, we got the superconductivity. And in the community of ion-based superconductivity, they called this kind of band incipient. Okay, so here uh, they are talking about the uh, pair scattering between the electron pocket and incipient whole band. And this is called incipient S plus minus wave. Uh, but as I have mentioned, originally the concept of incipient bands was introduced by Kazuhiko Kuroki back in the 2005. Okay. Then um, 
DCA people are numerically studying the uh, pairing interaction in the uh, in severe implant. Um, uh, for instance, this is the Arupes result for the uh, uh, ion selenide uh, for different uh, doping levels. This is a thermal energy, and this is an incipient plant. And in this particular mat material, we can even go from the BCS limit to the BAC limit. Okay. Okay, um, usually a flat band does not intersect this dispersive one. They either touch with uh, the dispersive band or there's a gap between the flat band and the dispersive band. But I was interested in the following question. Can you have a flat band that intersects a dispersive band like this? Okay, uh, this is interesting for a number of reasons, but can we have such a model? And uh, Lissini and myself show that yes, we can construct such a model, uh, both in the tetragonal system and the hexagonal systems, if we introduce a uh, further neighbor options. And, um, between the flat band and dispersing band, uh, there is a band inversion between the uh, band character. So why is this situation interesting? Because, uh, uh, yes, and uh, uh, recently I noticed that uh, the people at the uh, IBS published an interesting PRB paper. Okay. Um, why do I interest in this situation? Because if we can do the system, uh, make the uh, fame energy, make the flat band incipient, then uh, that may be interesting for the flat band superconductivity. Okay, now let's go to the one band uh, system with flat portion in the dispersion. Okay, here again, we can talk about the pair scattering between the uh, uh, dispersive portion and flat portion. Okay. So, Sharon and Syed and uh, ourselves uh, studied this for repulsive Hubbard U with flex plus DMFT, uh, also the, the determinant of quantum Monte Carlo. So, the model is uh, uh, just a, a square lattice. Uh, with a uh, second neighbor hopping T prime, okay? And if we set T prime uh, close to uh, minus one half the nearest neighbor hopping, uh, this produces a kind of frustration. And if you look at the dispersion, uh, we've, got, we've got a flat portion along these lines. So we call this uh, partially flat band. Then we can talk about the pair scattering between the flat part and the dispersive part like this. And the question is, uh, what kind of superconductivity uh, will this uh, produce? And um, this is a result for the spin susceptibility uh, for different doping levels. This is closer to the half ring. And this is skin structure. Um, in this case, we've got sort of a black spots, but uh, if we go into that direction, we've got a strange and finite area skin structures in, in K space. So something interesting is obviously happening. Okay. Uh, how about the superconductivity? So we look at the um, uh, eigenvalue of the Eliasberg equation, lambda, uh, this axis against band filling. And if you look at uh, these red dots, um, we've got an interesting double dome structure. Okay. Um, why do we have a double dome? 
because uh, in this region, if you got the uh, gap function, the gap function is more or less the usual D wave symmetry. But on this uh, left dome, uh, this is the gap function structure, uh, which is more complicated with uh, more than two nodes like this. So the uh, gap symmetry differs between the, uh, these two peaks. Okay? And that is a result of the, uh, the complex spin structure I just uh, showed. Have you added T prime because uh, you wouldn't have the result without T prime? That's right, yes. Uh, for instance- So you must have both T and T prime. That's right, correct. Uh, if you look at these green dots, then this is T prime equals zero result, namely nearest neighbor only uh, cosine band. So the, uh, the dome structure very much differs between the two cases. T prime zero, T prime minus one half the nearest neighbor. Okay, so this is the, uh, the gap function in K space. And if we uh, go to the real space by Fourier transforming, uh, this is the result. So in this case, we've got a very spatially extended. Um, Sorry, what is X? Sorry, yes, please. What is X? Real space X axis, real space Y axis. Sorry, what, what's your question? What is on the X axis? X and Y are real space coordinates, Laura. This uh -huh. is a K space, so this is a KY, a KX, KY. And I'm going to the real space. So this is a real space coordinate X, real space coordinate Y. Okay. So this is a, a, a nearest neighbor a lattice constant. So this is just for the uh, ordinary D wave. But if we look at this, uh, this uh, extended far beyond the uh, uh, lattice constant. Um, let me give this slide. Uh, we can say that usually superconductivity from electron electron repulsion works much better in two dimensional systems than in three dimensional systems. Because uh, if we're talking about the nesting physics along which the Cooper uh, their scattering occurs, then if you plot the strong pairing interaction in K space by orange, uh, this is two dimensional space and this is a three dimensional space. So the volume fraction of the uh, uh, large spin fraction needed pairing interaction is much, much greater for the uh, two dimensional or layered structures. And shown by Vyotaro Arita and also by Jiu Ronzaric uh, back in 1999. Okay, and this uh, is consistent with the experimental result that almost all the uh, newly discovered uh, superconductors are layer type structures, cuprates, brucellates, cobalt compounds, half -unim compound, cerium compounds, ion based compounds. Okay. How about the flat band superconductivity I just talked about? Then we have a totally different dimensional dependence. In one dimensions, uh, diamond chain or narrow wide band systems, then this is a spin susceptibility, which is rather featureless and very much extended in K space. And this is the gap function. Uh, where we can show that pairing is that S plus minus pairing between dispersive band and flat band. Okay. This is a two dimensional system, uh, TT prime model I just talked about. Then I mentioned that there's a wide area in K space for the uh, spin structure. 
then uh, that function has a very large amplitude for the flat portion. So this is not just as uh, isolated nesting points. So I can expect that if we go to the three dimensions, then uh, similar things should happen. And this should be speciality of the flat band superconductivity, namely three-dimensional systems uh, as good as two-dimensional systems. Namely, the flat band superconductivity is outside Arita's theorem. So I think we can look for the uh, flat band superconductivity in three-dimensional systems. And we know that there are uh, toy models for the three-dimensional flat band models. Okay, um, now let's come to the non ferm liquid properties. I'll be brief. Um, for this TT prime model, uh, we have calculated the imaginary part of the self energy as a function of the Matsubara frequency. Okay, how do I do this? Because uh, we know that if we, you look at the imaginary part of the self energy and if you look at the Matsubara frequency dependence, we can define the exponent alpha. And for the Fermi liquids, imaginary self energy uh, should be proportional to omega squared on the real frequency axis, which means that imaginary self energy should be proportional to I times Matsubara frequency on the Matsubara axis. Okay, so uh, if this exponent alpha equal to one, this is Fermi liquid. And if this exponent alpha is smaller than 0.5, then the system is a bad metal. So we have uh, calculated this exponent for the uh, TT prime model, flat band model, as a function of band filling. And these green dots as a result, this is well below 0.5. So here we are talking about a non phenomenalated but metallic states. In other words, the flat band superconductivity resides in a non phenomenalated regime. Okay. Um, non phenomenalated superconductivity was also discussed. Uh, for the Hatsugai core model, model by Philip Phillips. Um, they started from the uh, very non local and very long range interaction. Uh, this is an interaction uh, which is variable separable in K space. So, this is a very strange non local interaction. But for this toy model, they show that uh, there is a, a non ferromagnetic liquid superconductivity. Okay, so my guess is uh, non-local entangled interaction in flat bands uh, may favor the non fermi liquid superconductivity. And the details uh, should be a future work. Okay, um, I'm now moving on to the non equilibrium Have you got any other questions up to this? Point. So sorry. So what? What do you mean by non-local interaction? I thought the interaction itself was uh, local in your model. Uh, in my model, not in the uh, Hatsugai Komoto okay. model. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so in this model, I uh, I believe that it's an all-to-all -all coupled model. But in your model, I thought. Okay. I thought um, you. Interaction with okay. Vocals. Okay, a good question. Uh, oh, let's keep the detail, but uh, I mentioned that. Um, um, where do I? I mentioned this phase diagram uh, against the band filling, and this is a topological insulating phase, and the superconductivity uh, sits very, very close to, almost adjacent to. Uh, this topological phase. And here we do have the, uh, the very entangled uh, topological insulating wave functions. So 
this is just my guess that uh, if you sit close to this point, then the interaction, including the pairing interaction, uh, may be also very much entangled and non-local. I see, I see. By the way, so the, am I right that is the reason why the superconductivity sits close to this topological state is that topological state is happens when the family level is at the flat band and the the more closer to the I mean more the family energy being closer to the flat band will make I mean roughly speaking like enhance the interaction the, the mediated interaction of this two um perturbative process that uh, mediates the flat band and Right. Okay. Right. Um, that gives a very important question. Uh, I omitted that due to the uh, time limitation. So the question is, okay, we have to sit close to, but away from the flat band, but how much distance should we require uh, at the distance from the uh, flat band energy? And we can have a, a, some, um, some numerical uh, result for that. And uh, this distance is determined by a number of factors. Uh, one is a spin flexion mediated interaction on flat bands. Uh, it's if you look at the energy spectrum for the spin fluctuation dynamics, then that is a one factor determining uh, what the spacing should be. And also, uh, this required spacing depends on the band structure and lattice structure. So. Um, the, um, as you questioned, uh, the degree of uh, non-locality or entangled property should also uh, very much depend on this distance. So yes, I think that is an interesting feature problem. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, can I now move on to this? Okay, um, a totally different way to make the system topological is uh, to use a non-equilibrium. Um, the typical example uh, is uh, the Floquet topological insulator. What is this? Um, for the ordinary bands, uh, um, typical Griffin, if you shine a circularly polarized light to the system, then you can make the system topological. So this is the Floquet topological insulator. And today I'm going to question that, okay, what will happen when we shine a circularly polarized light to flat band systems? Okay, let's start with the ordinary Floquet topological insulator. Okay, back in 2009, Takashi, Oka, and myself proposed the following. Okay, let's have a, a Hankam lattice such as Grefien in zero magnet field and shine a circularly polarized light. So we can predict that there's a DC pole current um, because if we look at the energy dispersion, we can show that uh, we open topological gap to the Dirac points dynamically. And if you look at the churn density in K space, we have a very sharp peak at K and K prime points with the same sign between K and K prime. So this is a um, uh, theoretical prediction. And um, it took um, more than 10 years to experimentally verify this. Uh, this is a uh, uh, nature physics cover article last year. So James McIver in Hamburg Max Planck Institute experimentally detected the uh, Floquet topological insulator in um, graphene, okay. light induced anomalous hole effect. Okay. Um, what is the physics behind this? Um, 
The first starting point is a quantum anomalous Hall effect, namely quantum Hall effect in zero magnet field. This was first conceived by Duncan Huldane back in 1988. He considered a very compli complicated or rather artificial lattice, the basically honeycomb lattice, but he's introducing a complex transfer between second neighbors like this. So although the total magnetic flux is zero, we've got a locally plus flux and locally uh, minus flux here, okay? And he could show that this has a similar effect as the quantum flow effect. This has a tremendous impact. Um, then um, we propose this uh, flotatable insulator with some topological gap. And then uh, Kitagawa and the company in Harvard show that uh, in the leading order in the uh, one over uh, laser frequency, then the effective Hamiltonian is exactly the same as the uh, Hordain Hamiltonian with complex second neighbor transfers like this. Okay. okay. So that is the usual flocate voltage insulator. But today's uh, subject is flat ones. So my next question is, okay, let's shine circularly polarized light through the flat band system, such as the leap lattice. Okay. Then we can show that uh, this circularly polarized light induces photon assisted electron hopping uh, first one, the second one, which uh, result in a second neighbor complex hopping like this, uh, written in red here. Okay. Then we can show that we can open a topological gap between the flat band and the Dirac film okay. um, with uh, non trivial Chan numbers for these bands. Okay, um, what is a phase diagram? So this is a phase diagram against laser field intensity and re repulsive Hubbard U. Um, so this is a color plot for the W occupancy. For the blue part, we've got the Mott insulator, uh, namely the avoided W occupancy. So this is a dynamical induced uh, mod transition. And this panel is, again, this is the laser intensity, and this is the Hubbard U. And here I'm color plotting the Chan number, okay? So these are topological phases, and we've even got a topological to topological phase transitions. That is because uh, I talked about the laser induced a photon assisted uh, hopping. And if you look at the uh, amplitude of these laser induced hopping against laser heat intensity, this is a, a oscillating function and changes sign at number of places. And we've got uh, these transitions uh, every time we've got this sign changing point. I have a question. Uh, yes. What, what is the role of the flat band in this uh, uh, in this um, topology picture which you show here? I mean, uh, the flat band itself has uh, zero Chan number and uh, is kept away from the non-trivial, non-zero Chan number band. So, what is the role of the flat band in this case here? Do you need it? Actually? Sorry, I can't hear. What is the role of uh, what? what? What is the role of the flat band in uh, in uh, obtaining uh, these? Are topological dispersive bands because the flat band itself ah, stays at channel number okay. zero and okay. uh, right. the question right. is can you right. do can you live without it or is it somehow okay. necessary okay um here i'm talking about a leap lattice which is a bipartite so you've got an electron hole symmetry so which means that uh that the middle flat band has to have zero channel number um 
but that is just an um, effect of the uh, bipartite electron or symmetric case. So, uh, so my answer is that depends whether or not you destroy the electron hole symmetry. I think if I remember I, correctly, there was a, a theorem stating that if you have, if you have short range hopping, right, if, and the right. flat band cannot have non-zero chair number. Right, in equilibrium, yes. There's a famous no-go theorem, yes. So, so, so this, so the problem seems, or oh, the issue I think is not particle hole symmetry here, but it's just the fact that you have short range hopping. Oh. And therefore, and therefore oh, this yeah. flat band will always be, uh, will always carry a zero chain number if I understand well, correctly. Let me come to the, another example. Um, I was just going to uh, talk about the Kagome lattice, uh, which is uh, of course uh, uh, not electron hole symmetric. So on the Kagome lattice, if we show a cyclic polarized light, we again are induced Photon assisted distant neighbor hopping um, um, in two species. One is uh, first photon assisted hopping, the second one, and this is the blue hopping. And we can also have the first photon assisted hopping, the second one, and this red uh, photon induced hopping. So on the Kagome lattice, we've got uh, blue hoppings like this and red hopping like this. And the result is uh, the flat band touches, uh, touching the dispersing band uh, opens a gap between them. And okay, uh, now I come to the charm number for the Kagome lattice and the circular polarized light. So this is a three band system. So I'm coloring the top band in red, middle band in green, the bottom band in blue, and here I'm plotting Chan number against the laser field intensity. So if we look at the Chan number for individual bands, this is the result. So the Chan number behaves quite widely. So this is something quite different from the equilibrium situations uh, where as we have pointed out, there's a no-go theorem, which states that uh, unless you've got a very long range hopping, uh, the flat bands uh, is just uh, trivial. But if you shine a circularly polarized light, then the situation is totally different with the uh, middle band way behaving like this. No, I think this, this is a nice example, uh, which actually confirms also that uh, uh, what we discussed before, because you you basically what you achieve here is that you make the flat band slightly dispersive, right? At least this is what the picture seems to, and mm -hmm. therefore now it can have a non-zero chair number, and that's uh, what's that what other way, yes, right? right, yes. So you have you can you have here a way to use the flat band to so to say produce to generate a, a weakly dispersive but uh, band, but with a non-zero chain number, which may be very, is very useful. Huh? Yes, that is, a, that is an interesting facility because uh, uh, we have to uh, look at the energy scales. The first energy scale is the size of this topological gap. And the second energy scale is uh, the uh, slightly warped flat band, the, the band with this. We just introduced. So there may, there may be an interesting uh, uh, sort of interplay between different energy scales. Right. So that's an interesting question. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, to realize the Kagome lattice, this is one proposal. Um, this is a collaboration with uh, a chemist in MIT. Um, we propose that, yes, we can uh, prepare some organic molecule, phenyl and ring in this case, and then uh, polymerize into this kind of a Kogome lattice uh, with uh, non-trivial channel numbers. Okay, okay. Uh, we talked about the one is flat for the equilibrium case. How about the one is flat for non equilibrium flocate topological insulator, namely um, 
do flocate vertical insulators have one states? And Takashi Oka recently showed that uh, we can uh, fully transform the flocate block states to show that what they call topological obstruction, namely they show that uh, one year wave functions which are localized both in the real space and frequency space are just absent in the flocate vertical insulators. In other words, well, the driven system has no adiabatic route to undriven insulators. Okay. Um, okay, now I finally come to this part, non-equilibrium induced superconductivity. Okay, here I'm combining these two, namely the superconductivity and, and topological properties. And our proposal here is uh, the ordinary DUS superconductivity can be changed into a topological superconducting state D plus ID uh, with Floquet dynamics. So this is our re recent archive article. Okay. Uh, let me, let, let me make the definition of topological superconductivity clear. Uh, this is a famous uh, classification table uh, due to Altland, Zillenbauer, and Schneider, Liu and company. Um, um, my definition of topological superconductivity is just these, namely P plus I, I P weight, D plus I D weight, and so on. Okay, um, there are some papers which discuss uh, the effect of one of singularity. Uh, group velocity vanishes at a point at the one of singularity, and there are some papers discussing topological superconductivity. Okay, but here let me discuss the flat bands or partially flat band systems where the gro group velocity vanishes not at a point but along a line or uh, over finite areas. Okay. Um, so our proposal here is a new pathway should be ordinarily do d waves of conductivity when shined with circularly polarized light. Do we have locate topological superconductivity? So let me start with some classification picture again. So here I'm plotting the Dirac systems uh, in one body physics. As I mentioned that if you shine a circular polarized light to honeycomb lattice, then we end up with a whole gains model for anomalous quantum hole states. Okay. If we move on to the strongly correlated systems, on the other hand, we can show that uh, if you shine a um, strongly coupled uh, antiferro magnet, for instance, if you shine a circularly polarized light, you can induce a chiral spin coupling like this. By chiral spin coupling, I mean SI cross SJ dot SK type uh, spin spin interaction. Okay, so my question here is, okay, in the strong coupling regime, if we shine a circularly polarized light, can we induce some interesting superconductivity? And I'm going to conclude that yes, we can induce a chiral superconductivity where the size of the gap function is D wave, but if you look at the a complex gap function, its phase, then we have a structure like this, which characterizes uh, the chiral superconductivity. Um, there's a paper discussing the honeycomb superconductor plus circular polarized light, but in this work, uh, they uh, in, introduce superconductivity by putting pairing interaction by hand. 
But my question is here is uh, if we start from the original microscopic model, not introducing pairing interaction by hand, what will happen? Okay, so I start from that usual repulsive Harvard model on a usual square lattice, um, TT prime model, and shine a circularly polarized light. So this is just the microscopic Hamiltonian. Then I'm moving over to the strong, strong coupling regime, namely Harvard, repulsive Harvard U much greater than the uh, hopping T. In equilibrium, everyone knows that this wave gives you an effective Hamiltonian, which is called TJ model. Okay. But if you shine a circular polarized light, the effective Hamiltonian is like this, rather complicated. Uh, this is a flocker renormalized hopping. This is a photon modified kinetic exchange interaction. This is a photon induced correlated hopping. And uh, hopping is uh, uh, very much affected by the many bonding interaction and I call this correlated hopping. And this is a photon induced chiral spin coupling I just mentioned. Okay. Um, this slide shows that um, in the one body physics, if shine uh, circular polarized light to a honeycomb lattice, then uh, we have photon assisted second neighbor hopping, as I explained. But they come in two possible cases first, absorption of photon, and then emission of photon. And then uh, that gives this uh, hopping with uh, this phase factor. But equivalently, there's another uh, possibility, uh, photon emission first and photon absorption secondly. And then that will give you this phase factor. And if you uh, add up these, then we end up with the whole gains model, okay? So this is why graphene accommodates for a K to virtual insulator. If you apply the same thing for this square lattice, uh, that's no good because this path on the square lattice and that path uh, exactly cancel with each other. Okay, so in the one body problem, uh, we can't have a flocket version insulator in the square lattice. But if you go over to the strong, strongly correlated case, then there are Hubbard interactions and hopping is very much affected by the spin states, okay? So we can show that in the strongly correlated case, uh, something interesting happens even in the square lattice, okay? Um, so I don't have time to go into detail, but uh, this is a Bogolev of Dijan Hamiltonian, two by two. And if you look at this appearing amplitude component, then we can show that this acquires a dxy component in the dx squared minus y squared superconductor. Um, and this component involves uh, two space correlated hopping like this, and also the chiral spin coupling like this. Okay. As a result, um, if you plot a two-step two correlated hopping against a laser heat intensity and laser frequency, you've got an interesting structure with a series of uh, kind of resonance between the uh, photon energy and how about you? And also uh, we have a chiral spin coupling. Uh, we have an interesting series of uh, uh, kind of resonance between the Hubbard U and the laser photon energy. Okay, then uh, we can have the D-wave superconductivity plus circular plus light producing 
Locate vertical dx squared minus y squared plus i dxy pairing like this. This is a gap function amplitude. This is a gap function frequency. And we end up with this kind of uh, um, gap function structure, uh, D wave like. But if you look at the face of the gap function, we have an interesting topological structure and the ground state has a finite energy gap, unlike in the uh, uh, D-wave superconductor. Okay. Um, this is another phase diagram. This time, this is a laser heavy intensity and this is temperature. And here we've got a superconducting phase. Uh, this supports the absolute value of the gap function. And this supports the imaginary part of the gap function. Um, so um, we've got a kind of a dome, but the dome is uh, uh, not as a function of the band film, but as a function of laser field intensity. Let's skip this. Okay, so I just shown that plaque uh, dynamics uh, can give you a topological superconductivity like this, uh, but. If we move back to the equilibrium situation like this, I talked about the flat band physics. And my guess is the flat band system may be a good place to look for topological superconductivity in equilibrium as well. Okay. Okay. Um, experimental people may be interested and the following question. Okay, as a theoretical toy model, uh, flat one system is all right, but uh, do we have some real materials for, for them? Uh, one candidate is a mineral called azurite. And uh, people have shown that uh, a model Hamiltonian is close to the diamond chain. Okay. Um, by the way, this is a very famous uh, pigment in Japanese traditional uh, paintings. So if we can do the system, uh, something interesting might happen. Okay, another example is uh, there is a hidden ladder, ladder structures in uh, some transition metal oxides, um, which gives you an incipient uh, partially flat bands like this. Um, another example is an organic system called tau type organic conductor. Um, a model Hamiltonian for this system is just uh, this kind of uh, a checkerboard type structure with T prime close to minus 0.5 years neighbor hopping, uh, which gives us this kind of uh, partly flat dispersion. Okay, and I noticed that there are some space group classification of some uh, real materials like this, Kagome, pyrochloride, leap, bipartite, and so on. Um, how about the laser heat intensity? Can the intensity be strong enough for interesting effects? And the answer is yes. This is a required laser heat uh, intensity and frequency. And the, uh, the realized cases uh, belong to well above this critical line. Okay, let me summarize my talk today. Uh, so I talked about the superconductivity and topological phenomena for flat band models in equilibrium and non equilibrium. And um, I can conclude that flat ones uh, do indeed have a unique opportunities for the designing interesting properties. Okay, how about the future works? Um, details of the entangled non local interactions in flat ones, uh, details of non fermi liquid superconductivity. Okay. Um, as a final topic, 
uh, I talked about flocate vertical superconductivity, but this is just a uh, uh, general value of second neighbor Hopkins D prime. And in our work, we can show that the key imaginary two-step created hopping and chiral spin coupling. Uh, this is proportional to T prime. This is proportional to T prime squared. So a uh, large second neighbor hopping T prime as in partially flat bands um, does favor topological D plus ID superconductivity. So a future problem is in the case of maximally flat case, namely T prime equals to uh, minus 0.5 T, what kind of topological superconductivity arises? Um, since the flocket topological superconductivity shown uh, today uh, is for the strong coupling regime, so we'll be talking about the flat band physics in the strong coupling regime. And I think that's a new challenge. Okay, let me finish uh, with the uh, list of my collaborators uh, for these uh, works. And uh, let me also thank uh, the uh, funding agencies. Uh, that's all I have uh, today. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Aoki, for a very interesting talk. Uh, let us thank Professor Aoki. And uh, we have time for uh, questions. Uh, so maybe let me start. Um, you were uh, mentioning two types of flat bands, right? One was uh, where one of the bands was completely flat and the other one was partially flat. So yeah. uh, in uh, when it comes to superconductivity, uh, what is the main difference? Maybe uh, is is there is one better than the other or? Uh... Um, at present, we can't say which is the better. Uh, so the whole physics is uh, as stressed. Uh, the key process is the pair. Uh, quantum mechanical virtual pair hoppings uh, between the uh, uh, flat band and dispersing band in this case, and uh, in this case between the flat portion uh, and the dispersive portion. And uh, the detail of the uh, uh, spin fracture intermediate interaction uh, very much depend on the spin structure like this. And so, um, uh, yes, the best slide should be this. Let me show the. Yes, this is a two band case with a flat band and dispersive band. And this is a spin structure. And this is a gap function structure. This is a uh, flat band has a positive amplitude for the gap function. Dispersive band has a negative uh, gap function. So we call this uh, S plus minus pairing between flat band and dispersive band, okay? On the other hand, uh, in this two-dimensional example, we are talking about the partially flat band, one band with partially flat band. And this uh, shape of the band dispersion dictates the structure of the spin, like this, in K space. Um, so, uh, this very much differs from the uh, somewhat featureless uh, two-band system, but everything depends on the uh, uh, that structure, the shape of the uh, uh, band structure, and so on. So we cannot say um, which is better at present. And another yeah. point is uh, I mentioned that, uh, let me get the right, I mentioned that uh, I repeatedly said that incipient flat band is important. Namely, the flat band should be close to the same energy, but somewhat away from the clinical potential. So the main question is, okay, what should this distance should be for the optimal superconductivity? 
And uh, Kazuhiko Kuroki and the company uh, invested this. So for various models, uh, they are plotting the uh, TC or area Shibag lambda against uh, position of the chemical potential. And almost universally, they got a sharp uh, upturn of TC is a very sharp dip in TC. And the question is what determines this dip with this? Okay. And their conclusion is um, that very much depends on the momentum integrated since susceptibility uh, against frequency. Uh, the size of this structure in this sensibility on the energy axis or frequency axis. And they also showed that this uh, structure very much depends on the uh, uh, actual lattice system. So we have a bilayer square lattice, we have a two leg radar system with the cross links, and so on. So, um, your question about uh, which is better, one band or two band, uh, should also involve this kind of uh, uh, discussion for the optimum uh, optimum distance between the chemical potential and the flat part of the dispersion. So this is, I mm. think this is a very interesting future problem. Mm -hmm. And maybe related, um, so, so experimentally what would be kind of feasible you you shown it at the end towards the end uh, some nice examples and candidates um, so which one do you think is is maybe easier experimentally to realize oh, uh, from oh uh, that's a difficult question this is a one-dimensional diamond chain is of course a one-dimensional system so this is a kind of bunch of one dimensional system where we obviously expect very large quantum fluctuations. Um, so um, the same applies to this uh, hidden ladder system. Ladders are also quasi one dimensional systems. Um, so this is a two dimensional example. Um, and the nice thing about this is T prime is uh, uh, just minus one half the nearest neighbor hopping with this kind of uh, uh, configuration of organic molecules. Um, so I imagine this might be a good candidate. And uh, let's see. Um, but so we have to really look for the uh, right situations because uh, the situation very much differs between different space groups. Uh, these systems have, of course, different space groups. And so, um, yeah, so the search for the uh, flat one systems uh, has just begun. So. Maybe we can use AI or something for that. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Alexei. Right, thanks. This is a, a bit of a follow up to what Tillian was asking. So, in particular for the partial flat band, you have shown an example of the square lattice. So, I, I think. If I remember correctly, although I might be wrong, uh, if one takes a honeycomb lattice with exactly first and second nearest neighbor hoppings, also I think it's uh, there's a ratio where uh, part of the um, band structure turns flat. Do you expect any qualitative difference to the, um, with respect to the square lattice? Um, well, um, we are trying to study the uh, hexagonal systems. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, one big difference is, of course, the uh, space group is different for the hexagonal case. Uh, so mm -hmm. the uh, irreducible representations for the uh, pairing are also very much diverse. And so uh, we are finding some important differences, but uh, that, that is not, that, that is just, um, uh, a work in progress, so uh, I can't say anything at present. Okay, okay, thanks. 
Uh, we also have a question from Victor. Hi, uh, thank you. Hideo, thank you very much for your talk. I wanted, uh, it's also a continuation of the questions before related to the dimensionality. Um, when you say non-Fermi liquid, what in particular address? And then second, you also said that in 2D you expect higher temperature uh, than in 3D. What about 1D? Should it be even better or not? Okay. Okay. Uh, let me first uh, answer your first question. Um, so we can quantify the degree of non-Fermi liquid property in terms of this uh, um, exponent alpha. Uh, the, uh, the smaller this exponent below one half, the bigger the non fermi liquid properties. But um, this frequency dependence in the self energy is already incorporated in our uh, calculation of the superconductivity, including the Elias-Schwarz equation. So everything is included in our calculation superconductivity. So, um, so we haven't uh, pinpointed uh, which particular aspect of the non ferrum liquid property affects the superconducting properties most. So that is also another uh, interesting future program. Um, yeah, so, um, so that's why I mentioned that uh, that is an uh, important future program in, in, in my summary slide. And to answer your second question um, about the dimensionality, uh, OK. So your question is, OK, 2D is better than 3D. So how about 1D? Um, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, one dimensional system has the largest quantum fluctuations. And we know that a TC is equal to zero if we have a 1D or quasi 1D system. In 2D, we know that a TC can be finite if we have a costalis solid transition, but the calculation of a TC for the costalis solid uh, superconductivity is also technically difficult. So uh, this argument is done uh, when the quantum fluctuations are neglected. So uh, for that, we have to include some um, weak interlayer coupling or weak interchain coupling. And so that will be an interesting program, yes. Um, so, okay. Yeah, so, yes, yeah, that's an, that's an interesting, but the um, quantum fluctuation is uh, uh, rather uh, difficult to handle. So we have to be careful about the theoretical method we choose. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, do we have any further questions from the audience? It seems not. So in this case, uh, let us thank Professor Aoki again. Thank you. And uh, with this, uh, we conclude our uh, today's uh, seminar.